from Ken Dean. Ken is a percussionist uh, here with the New Mexico Philharmonic, but also with the Santa Fe Symphony and the Chamber Orchestra of Albuquerque. Um, he actually studied percussion here at the University of New Mexico and has been uh, been here for, for quite a while. Is that right, Ken? Quite a while, since 1973. And he was just telling me uh, when we were in the green room that he uh, he had to learn the, the jaw harp because of uh, uh, New Mexico Symphony performance. Is that right? Well, this was the uh, Chamber Orchestra of Albuquerque, which uh, uh, is now now defunct. But uh, uh, yes, it was uh, uh, for a piece by Charlie. And um, that's that's how that came about. I can't wait to hear more about it. Let's, uh, without further ado, let's turn it over to Ken Dean. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, I, I think what I'm going to start doing right now is just kind of showing, um, well, for one thing, you know, what a juice harp is and what it looks like. Here's a, a very nice uh, a Schluter juice harp from Germany. And um, here's something from Italy. This is a Sicilian. Uh, juice harp, very big and hard to play and all that, but it fits their uh, dancing styles and such. Here's a nice little one from Russia. And I want to show a couple of things that I haven't had a chance to, uh, we usually run out of time, so I thought I'd just try and cover them now. These are wooden jaw harps from, made in the Philippines, and they have, um, you know, nice little decorations and stuff like that. And they, uh, and instead of using your teeth, you hold these against your lip. And the Vietnamese have a, a style of brass juice harp that works on the same principle as the Philippine harps. And they sound like this. All right, so um, I, I probably won't be able to, to, to see any of the other uh, folks here for, for a little bit. The, um, uh, so we'll take this uh, juice harp here and, and show you the, the, this outer part here is the frame. And this is where you hold the instrument. And your um, task in holding the instrument is to try and avoid contact with this part here, which is um, officially called the, the lamella, but it's uh, the part that moves. And you need to make sure that, uh, uh, unless you're doing a special effect, that you don't uh, touch this while you're playing. Um, another, so uh, one of the basics here is that you place this instrument against your teeth. And so we're gonna kind of look like this. So not on the top, but on the back, and then with enough space for this part to vibrate back and forth. So um, let me demonstrate how this, I'm gonna play uh, uh, a uh, folk song from, uh, from the US, and it's uh, uh, not too far from here, it's the, the Platte River. So this is the, the, uh, the Platte River Boatman. All right, so um, anyways, that gives you an indication of what the sound should be like. One of the one of the problems that most people have, of course, is just getting past that fir first part of where to place the the instrument against your teeth, and and also to uh, to relax your lips around the, uh, the the frame of the instrument, and in order to create a, a decent kind of um, a seal, if you will, in order to make sure that you have a, a resonator. Uh, a good resonator for for getting getting the notes and and then the main thing about getting these notes is that it takes a lot of experimentation to 
sort out <clears throat> uh, where where the where the the instrument resonates well. Um, it, the uh, the the style. Okay, the concept is very bustling, and and so if you have even a, a, a even a passable uh, ability to whistle, um, you can kind of get the concept of what you need to do in order to 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 get the notes when you're when you're playing with a with a jaw harp. Um, now, I think at this point I need to either observe what what some people have if they if they brought some instruments to to play or to um, uh, uh, allow some people to to ask questions about uh, the the technique of of playing a playing a jaw harp. So, is there is there a way to to start fairly quickly in in doing that? Well, it seems like most people don't have their video on right now. Um, okay. So, uh, I don't know if we can <laughs> see, see most people. <laughs> All right. Um, I, I guess what I can do is just kind of, uh, we'll just try to do a slow motion, uh, uh, sort of get, getting into the instrument here. And so again, the teeth is, uh, is against the back part of the frame. And then you have to relax your lips. And you want to try and center the, the working part of the instrument, which is towards the end of the frame, so that it's um, doing mo the most activity uh, in, inside the resonator. If you, if you try to bring it in too far, you'll, you'll soften the sound. So you should be able to hear, hear the difference between doing that. And of course, if you're, you're using a larger frame with a, with a lower note, it's even worse. So not there, but out here. Um, so let's talk about breathing. And, and how that uh, affects the, the sound of the instrument. Um, even, even though this works on a, on a kind of passive radiator kind of uh, principle, um, it still requires some air in order to get volume. If I, if I play the instrument uh, with, without pushing some air through it, 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 it'll be a softer sound. But if I... Uh, exhale or inhale pretty much normally, uh, unless you're doing certain techniques, uh, it, it gives it a much fuller sound. So this is without air, and this is with air. And again, I'm not giving it a lot of air, just, uh, just uh, like, a, like a normal exhale. Um, and, and this uh, drastically affects the tone of the instrument. Um, so let's talk about articulation, and this is uh, mainly how the the instrument gets to be managed in in music. Um, so it's a little hard. Oh, uh, I recommend only pulling and not doing any of this um, if you're if you're trying to get a faster articulation. There are styles of music where that's required, but uh, one problem with that is that it tends to break instruments uh, more rapidly. Uh, it's, it's, it's hard on these uh, uh, thin pieces of spring steel that are, that are inside the frame. So, when, <clears throat> so there are other ways to, of increasing your speed of articulation. They may not be hard articulations, but it's, it's a, a good way of doing this. So the basic one, of course, is just pulling on the instrument. But the other way of getting articulation, it is a softer articulation, but it's very useful uh, in a given passage. And this is simply just changing the direction of the air. And if you uh, do it right, it, it, it sounds 
pretty good. Um, for for instance, it's a little difficult to do uh, row your boat. Let's let's try this with uh, just using the fingers. Okay, but if you use a technique where you just change the direction of the ear uh, in between uh, strokes of the finger here, you get, um, you can, it, it becomes more, and, and you can see how that's just a, a little easier to, to do in a, in a given passage. Um, so I, um, I, I, I hope that will get you uh, to a particular point. Um, I guess without being able to see uh, people, whether they're uh, having any uh, positive effect on their playing, about the only thing I could think of to, to do at this point is maybe just to, to do some, uh, some music in, and demonstrate, demonstrate or try to demonstrate some different kinds of uh, uh, things. We can ask so, the participants to uh, raise their hand virtually on the participants menu if they do have a question or want to interact with you. Okay, so you can do that, and I can okay. unmute you. To I can unmute them, and they can ask a question. So, if you just raise your okay. hand uh, somehow, get our attention, we can do that. <laughs> Even if you don't have video, right. if you raise your hand, I can see that. Right. Um, let's do. Uh, let's see. I think this is uh, Buffalo Gals. We'll we'll just do some uh, songs to, to just demonstrate uh, uh, some of the different things that you that you can do with a jaw jaw heart. And um, let's see, in um, deference to the uh, Scandinavian thing that was uh, uh, done uh, earlier here, we'll um, uh, do a, a little, I think this is a Norwegian tune and we'll, we'll just play a, a short bit of that. In that in that piece, I'm incorporating a number of uh, different techniques in order to properly get the notes and and uh, hopefully get the feel of that kind of uh, uh, Norwegian style. Um, some of which were based on uh, fiddle tunes and others of original jaw harp tunes that were also started in that uh, era. Uh, let's see. Oh, I'll have to get a little water. Uh, another thing you find out is that this is, in many respects, like playing a wind instrument. It'll, it, it can dry you out. So, um, now there's another, a little bit more in, in technique, and this, the, this concerns uh, 
um, using the, the glottis in order to um, help to hit certain notes and, and make those a, a little um, better sounding. And um, so, uh, if you uh, so, an example of a glottal stop is like a huh, huh, that that uh, that the ending of that uh, uh, huh sound is um, a glottal stop, and you can utilize that uh, again to make some of them it's more more solid. Uh, one thing that's difficult to do on a on a jaw harp is to play the uh, the lower half step uh, on on the on the basic note of the instrument. But if I close my glottis a little bit, you can get get that half step or, or, or approach that half step. And and that's uh, another good thing to do. Um, it all requires a lot of experimentation on on your side. Um, uh, um, uh, this is a, a lot like uh, uh, using a duck call um, or, or uh, certain kinds of wind embouchure. There's everybody sort of feels the the, the effects of uh, the, the changes of movement in, inside the mouth very differently, and uh, you, you need to try and um, you can try to base things on on other people's descriptions, but it can often not feel the same way to you as it does to to me and so there's lots of things that you can try to do uh, some people can, for instance can use um, vowel sounds and uh, other such things to try and help that help guide themselves into finding a resonant spot um, and, and it can be uh, initially very uh, unnerving uh, when you find yourself just sort of floundering around and not being able to find that sweet spot. Um, but, but when you do, you'll know it and it and it's, uh, becomes pretty obvious. Uh, of course, back in the day when we had uh, cathode ray tubes uh, for, for televisions and, and such, uh, uh, it was often very easy to tell if you were watching TV because uh, you, know, you get these uh, uh, wavy patterns on your, on your television set. And of course, with some of these lower instruments, um, your when, when your head is really resonating, your your vision blurs, and it's uh, uh, these are telltale signs that you're doing something right. Um, let's see. I well, I, I guess I could play something uh, classical, um, and let me. Yeah, well. Uh, we'll, we'll do another uh, little something pro, from Mozart. This is uh, uh, from the uh, last movement of his uh, horn quintet. Um, Uh, there's there's lots of uh, different things you can uh, try out on a, on a jaw harp and uh, and and there's no reason to uh, leave any musical style alone. Um, the only things that you know people are going to try to ask you to you know do it with with some compliments and such. Um, and and of course uh, uh, simple things like uh, um, ear training and. Musical theory can can help you to 
approach these different styles in a, in a certain way. Um, and there's no reason, for instance, to, to leave jazz out of the equation, uh, especially blues, uh, where there's often a consistent uh, 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 tonality that, that can uh, work in, in your favor when you're, when you're using a jaw heart. Um, let's see. So I guess we'll touch a little bit on um, some of these uh, other instruments. The, the Hmong harps from uh, Vietnam are uh, often a lot of fun to play. They, uh, uh, again, they're, they're, there's no requirement. Uh, actually, you should not use your teeth when playing these instruments and just resting it against your lips. And it's kind of like the um, uh, issues that you have with, uh, with a, a, a regular jaw harp and that you want to try and find out where the working bit is on, on this. And it's right towards the tip of, of, the, of the part that moves the most. And um, I don't know if you can hear a little buzz from, uh, from these instruments there. They're so tightly uh, made that, uh, you know, the, the turbulence that you create, uh, you know, is, is uh, very easy to enhance. So again, if you hold this in the wrong direction, put your mouth in the wrong place. Not, not a lot of sound, but more sound if you put it um, here where the, where the looking end is. Um, so just grab some of these instruments and, and uh, you know, get, um, and get, a, get experimenting and trying, trying different things. I guess I should mention that uh, uh, if you try to get an inexpensive jaw harp from uh, like, like say a regular music store or something like that, you're, the, the results are going to be very unsatisfying. And uh, uh, so you really need to try and find some of these online um, sellers to, uh, who have the better instruments available to them and, and try to you know, give yourself a chance, a much better chance of learning uh, with with a, with a good instrument. Um, I would say you have to try and spend um, probably in the range of about twenty to forty dollars to 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 find uh, decent uh, playable instruments that that will do the job. Uh, try to use tuned instruments rather than the, the so-called untuned instruments. Um, <coughs> There, there's a bigger gap gap in the untuned ones, and they're harder to learn to play with. Um, let's see. Now, the recusions and and some of the uh, uh, some of the the uh, uh, former Russian uh, countries have some fantastic instruments. They're they're works of art but uh, they're priced like works of art. And even though they're very playable, I would, I would recommend that when, if you're just learning to, to and, and just use some of the basic, uh, the better Austrians uh, instruments like the Vimmers or uh, Mr. Schluter's instruments are great. And there's a, uh, the Hungarian uh, Salagis are also uh, fantastic, but they're, uh, the thing about the Salagis, especially the cold blacks, is that they uh, they they require very good technique in order to uh, uh, play without uh, pranging uh, uh, the, the frame of the instrument with your with with the tongue of the instrument. They're they're just incredibly tightly spaced and and, and flexible, which which makes them great sounding, but also uh, very difficult to play. Uh, any questions at all? So once again, if anybody has a question, there is a way to raise your hand in the participants menu, and I can see it and unmute you so you can ask a question. Uh, since most people choose not to use video, so <laughs> I understand that. Um, it's a perfectly good thing to do. Okay, so I think uh, 
think we don't have any more questions or any questions. Okay. Um, I guess about the only thing I can think of is, you know, um, uh, try to learn a little music theory. There's uh, lots of really good sources online these days uh, for both learning to play the instrument and, and finding uh, good instruments are, are, are out there. Uh, mouthmusic.com is, is, uh, is a good source. They have uh, uh, good instruments for sale and uh, I use them for, for a long time. Of course, there's other uh, places like Danmoy in, um, in, in Germany um, and uh, there's a, a, some newer places, even eBay or, or Amazon, you might be able to find uh, some good instruments, but you have to be careful, of course, at, at what you're, what you're pur purchasing. And, and sometimes it's hard to tell uh, from a picture, um, you know, how, how an instrument's going to sound. And um, <clears throat> so I, I would stay with some of the basics, um, which would be the, the Vimmers, the, the Schluters, and, and the, the Zalagis, uh, which are um, all fine instruments. Um, there are other things out there like the, uh, um, um, uh, well, there are, there are other instruments that are made for bluegrass styles. Um, they're actually not, they're, they're, they're really too soft even, even for bluegrass, but if you have a good microphone, the, those, those instruments will, will work in those situations. And, uh, you know, if you're, if you're okay with that. And of course, um, everything resonates in your head and, and you can um, find, find all those notes uh, there. Sometimes they're hard to project without a lot of practice. And um, I would just be careful making sure that you've got everything uh, uh, set uh, in, your, in your mind before you get there. But try to play with other people, try to, try to work um, in, in those situations and, and, and you'll find out how, how things work or don't. There are some inherent intonation issues with, uh, with the instruments, but the, uh, with some practice, uh, you get those things sorted out. And, um, uh, and, but it also helps to have some sympathetic uh, fellow music to, to work with, with you going, going through that. Um, so uh, it's probably time for us to, to wrap things up. And uh, I, I just want to thank uh, uh, all of you who've, uh, who've uh, come to check things out. And I hope that, uh, uh, again, you'll, you'll try to uh, find a way to, you know, uh, learn to play the instrument. Uh, this used to be a very common instrument and, and of course uh, a little on the rare side, but um, uh, it's, it's always a lot of fun to just uh, have and deal with and experiment. Um, there are people who use the instrument for trance-inducing uh, trans um, meditation and, uh, and of course, that's another avenue of, uh, of the instrument and uh, just as valid as, as any, anything else that's out there. So um, I guess in, in closing, that's, that's pretty much the, uh, the, the gist of it. And I hope you, hope you uh, will enjoy playing this uh, instrument in the future or listening. Thank you so much, Ken. That was lovely.